Welcome to the Sport and Recreation Alliance video exploring governance in sport. Today we are looking at the true value of true values, created and read by Rhys Jones. Have a look at these organisational values. Top performance, leading by example, active involvement and social responsibility. They sound pretty good. They're strong, concise and meaningful. They may even resemble your own company's values, the ones you've spent so much time writing, debating and revising. They're also the values of Volkswagen in 2015, around the time of their Dieselgate scandal. During an investigation by the Environmental Protection Agency, it was found that Volkswagen had been cheating in emission tests by including software in its cars that made them appear far less polluting than they are. As a result, the company was fined $25 billion and the whole episode damaged customer confidence in the brand. Clearly, their values were not worth more than the paper they were written on. However, when implemented correctly, clearly identifiable organisation values offer a stable bedrock around which staff, athletes, participants and shareholders can unite. With a shared ideal, an organisation can focus its energies on the collective goals and has been shown to increase its performance up to 30%. Let's have a look at a good example from the sporting landscape recently. The FAW launched its strategic plan in 2015 based on three core values. Excellence, family and respect. These values acted as a powerful guide to every decision and behaviour that was made in the FAW, irrespective of what level an individual or team was in the organisation. They were brought to life in the Together Stronger Euro 2016 qualification marketing campaign to coincide with the Welsh national men's team attempt to reach their first major final since 1958. Here are a few examples of decisions being influenced by values. Every single member of the Wales squad was included in the promotional photo shoot to accompany the launch of Together Stronger. Under 21 players, members of the women's squad and a member of the Wales deaf team were positioned alongside fans and top stars such as Gareth Bale. Players began to personally tweet from their own social media accounts the hashtag Together Stronger shrugging off stick from their PR and clubs to voice their belief in the values. Fans fed on this authenticity, seeing it as a message that embodied a shared belief rather than empty words that a sporting organisation is forced into fashion. The value spread and galvanised all that were involved. As a consequence, attendances at matches broke records with an increase in 360% in ticket sales. There was a huge surge of interest in the Welsh national football, both local and domestically and internationally, and social media followers peaked at 467%. And of course, the national team produced its best ever performance in a major tournament, reaching the semi-finals, beating tournament favourites Belgium and moving into the top 10 globally ranked teams. Outside of sport, a great example of the value of values can be seen in the company Zappos. This American shoe retailer went from a struggling startup in 2000 to getting acquired by Amazon in a deal valued at $1.2 billion in 2009. The CEO, Tony Shea, attributes the success of the company to its values. Shea revealed that the process of creating the company values was long and took almost a year. He emailed the entire company several times to get a lot of suggestions and feedback on which core values were the most important. He admits that getting the commitment to the values was the most challenging part, but better going through the process than, quote, the values just end up being part of a meaningless plaque on the wall of a corporate lobby. Here are some examples of how Zappos brings its values to life. In its deliver wow through service value, the longest customer service call took almost eight hours. Another phone rep helped a caller locate a nearby pizza place that would deliver after midnight. Employees are invited to post questions for the monthly Ask Anything newsletter. 
Questions have included, why are women's and men's shoe sizes different? What other music have we considered for our telephone hold music? And where do you see us in three years? To pursue growth and learning, Zappos maintains an on-site library to encourage its employees to read books. Zappos headquarters in Las Vegas is open to the public and you can get a free one hour tour to the venue when visiting, helping build open and honest relationships with communication. And they don't hold back when it comes to the create fun and a little weirdness value. In the past, they have encouraged over the top nerve gun battles, inviting a camel into the office and even tutu Tuesdays, whereas you may have guessed employees are welcome to wear a tutu to work. In fact, whilst it might sound crazy, Zappos believe so much in their values that they will offer new recruits $3,000 to leave the company. Yep, you heard that correctly. Leave. If you aren't committed to the values and the culture, the company really prefers that you leave. Take the money, though, and you can never come back. We have now seen the importance of values, but the question is, how do we find them? There are many methods documenting how to get your values available on the web. The one key step that is consistent throughout these examples is getting the key people at all levels of the organisation involved in the process. In a sporting organisation, this will likely include your staff, athletes, board members, participants and volunteers. By doing this, you'll not only get some amazing ideas and different viewpoints, but also get the important buy-in and ownership, which will make the values much easier to implement. Once you have selected a group of 6 to 20 people, depending on the size of your organisation and the member base you serve, get them all in a room away from the office, sports centre headquarters, with as few distractions as possible. Get the group to throw out an idea. Write it down and discuss it. Here are some questions you may want to use to guide your thinking. What's important to us? What brought us together and continues to hold us together? What will help guide us when we're facing a difficult decision? What are things you like about what we do at our organisation and how do we do it? And what parts of our organisation are we proud of? Repeat this for all ideas that are thrown out and then have a break. After regrouping, read aloud what you have so far. You can then refine and check for overlap with these questions guiding your thinking. Is this something we'll still believe in five years, ten years time? Is this something we're willing to hire on? Is this something we're willing to fire on? Is this something we can apply to our staff, participants, athletes, board and volunteers? After allowing a week or so period of reflection, arrange a second meeting with the same people. Once again, going through your values, refining them even further. You can repeat this process as required until you're happy with the outcome. Adidas, for example, has opted for more traditional looking values in performance, passion, integrity and diversity. Whereas build a Bear Workshop has opted for slightly alternative ones such as Reach, Learn, Diversity, Collaborate, Give and Celebrate. Neither example is wrong or right. They are values that accurately reflect the culture these businesses wish to promote. Congratulations. By now you have your set of values. Now the hard work begins. Up to this point, your values have largely been a paper exercise. The true acid test of whether your values will stick and benefit your organisation will be if you can bring them to life. This will require time, effort, resolve and patience. But as illustrated earlier, if you stay the course, the results are worth it. Here are a few tried and tested methods to get your values ingrained in your organisational culture. As a manager... You're always on stage, whether you realise it or not. Staff will mirror what they see, and it's important to set the example. Create rituals that will ensure behaviours become habits. This is tough because it requires a lot of energy and willpower to change. So integrate them into your daily doings. Talk about them in every meeting. 
involve others in sharing their experiences and stories about particular behaviours. When recruiting, ask behavioural open-ended questions regarding your desired actions during the interview process. Always ask candidates for examples of that behaviour. Integrate your new hires into your culture immediately. You only have one chance at a great first impression, right? Make it count. It'll last the rest of their career with you. Put up signs and phrases everywhere. It demonstrates your commitment to the values and provides a common language around desired actions. Coach people to teach and reinforce the culture. Whenever you're engaged with staff, Relate the situation back to one of your desired actions and use the same language to reinforce good behaviour. Give your managers the right tools. Provide desired language, definitions, tutorials, conversational starters, um, how-to guides and real concrete ways to help them integrate discussing the actions into their everyday managing and coaching. And lastly, create accountability by finding a way to measure things. Rank the behaviours important for each position in the company and develop a scoring matrix that can be used in performance reviews. Encourage employees to positively reinforce desirable actions and to non-threateningly point out that when they just need a little bit of adjustment. It's the only way we learn. Hopefully this short video has given you an insight into the value of values and highlights the importance of this process, giving it the time, care and priority it deserves. By defining and living our values front and centre on our organisations, we provide a better service and a positive experience to the people that interact within our sporting community. If you have any questions on anything that's been talked about today, please don't hesitate to contact me on rjones at sportandrecreation.org.uk and for more information on how governance can help your organisation, head to sportandrecreation.org.uk.